So evening all, my name is Simon Brown. As I said, uh, doing tonight's uh, presentation on the lazy trading system. Quick bit of background to the system. I designed it in about 2004, uh, late 2004. Uh, I was looking for a intraday Aussie futures trading system. I based it on a system from a chap called Daryl Guppy in Australia, uh, but he used in time, I thought it was too complicated, so I quickly simplified it. I started trading it in 2005, and have been trading it constantly since then, but with a lot of adaptions to it. Uh, maybe, I mean, you know, a, a fair bunch of adaptions to it. And, and I suppose the key adaption to it, perhaps, is to be making it more and more lazy. Uh, we'll go into that. I'm going to describe the system as it currently works. I'm going to describe you know, the pros and cons of it. Uh, then we'll look at some alternatives. We'll look at places as to where to trade it in terms of costs. Uh, and then, of course, questions. This is a trend-based mechanical system. And, and that is what I am as a trader. I'm a trend-based trader. I'm a mechanical trader. What I mean by trends, I want to catch those, 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 those moves that are moving either upwards or downwards. Uh, sideways markets are going to hurt. In a sideways market, my trading always, always suffers. That's just the way it is. Mechanical in the sense that there are absolute rules and I stick to them 100%. As I said, I have tweaked it over the years, uh, and in fact, I'm introducing a tweak this evening, but that this evening's tweak is probably the first one in maybe three or four years. In other words, I've been trading it pretty much as is for the last three or four years, and this evening's tweak is a, a minor one, but there's some, some reasons behind it. We'll touch on that when we get there. It's designed for indices or currencies. Uh, it does not work with shares. Shares are simply too volatile. That, that's just the way it is. It's not designed to trade with shares, indices, currencies. I haven't tried it with commodities. I've never traded commodities. I'm not particularly interested in trading commodities. So that might be an option, uh, but you'd have to go and test that for yourself. It is very, very simple. On a weekly chart, this thing takes me maximum five minutes a week. Sorry, 10 minutes a week. Five minutes uh, at, at, over the weekend to check my charts. Do I or don't I have any trades or entries or exits? And then five minutes to do that entry or exit. Obviously, if you were trading it on a 15-minute chart or a daily chart or something, then yes, then more time. But, you know, lazy is the operative word here. I'm, I'm looking yeah, at Let's step back quickly. I don't want to diverge too much, but let's step back quickly. When I was designing this system, and I spent much of 2005 and 2006 day trading Aussie futures, made money, nice, lovely, but it was a job. I spent, I was spending eight, ten hours a day in front of a computer. It was just a job, and I thought to, it, to me the epiphany there was, um, hang on a second, you know, I could uh, it's just you know, cut my hair, go work for a bank if you're going to have a job. What do we want our trading to be? lazy. You don't want to be day traders. You don't want to be tied to a computer screen. You want to be able to go and do stuff. So that's where this came from. In the weeklies, uh, on a weekly chart, I've had a trade. I had a trade on the Indy 25 that ran for about three years. It gave me about 120, 130% over the time. Um, but it absolutely, it, 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 you know, when, when the trends go, it gets you into it uh, and you just run. Great question from Clive. At what point would you determine you're in a sideways market? Clive, I've never yet managed to successfully determine that. And in truth, I need to go and put some more time into it. So the, the, the one most people use is ADX. Uh, ADX is an indicator. It doesn't give you direction. It just gives you strength. Um, but I've never managed to get ADX to work. So truthfully, in the sideways market, this thing bleeds money. It absolutely does. We lose money. You know, I, was, I got put into an indie trade uh, I don't know, five, six, seven, eight weeks ago, a couple of while back, uh, stopped out uh, last week. Um, small loss, a couple of percentage points. But I, I, you know, the problem with trying to say, is a market going sideways, is that when you say it is going sideways, you don't get in and then it stops and you miss a big trade. There is, if you go to justonelap.com, uh, look for Warren Peacock, do a search on him. He's got a methodology for determining trending versus trading markets, and also for trading systems within a trending or a trading market. Uh, we can spend a lot of time in cash. So this system went full cash uh, towards the end of last year for the first time 
since 2009 um, and has now been dipping in. But even when I'm dipping in, I'm only going 12.5% uh, cash. We'll give the details in a moment. But pretty much we've been sitting uh, in a lot of cash recently. So, uh, Clive, to your question, in a sideways market, what I'm doing is I'm not getting much much triggers. So perhaps this, the point is that I actually spend a fair amount in cash. Um, and there are a lot of ways to adapt the system. And I'm going to talk on those later. I am this evening, I actually trade this system in two methodologies. I do my weekly, which is what we're looking at this evening. And then I take it and I drop it down to a daily chart and I chart the top 40 and I trade the Aussie futures on it. So, you know, and you can Drop it to a 15-minute chart. You, there's many ways to 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 that. Um, uh, Clive, you're looking for the webinar. I, <laughs> I was hoping you wouldn't ask for that. I don't remember. Uh, just go search Warren, and you will find it up. Uh, and then from there, once you've got it, you will it will go through. So go search Warren on just one lap. Look for the trending and trading, and then the links are all in there. So there are many ways to adapt it, and we will we will absolutely touch on those. So lazy as traded on just one lap. Okay, that's critically important. Um, what are we doing on, on just one lap? So, folks, you're saying it's slow. The trick is, is we've got hundreds of people in the webcast, and that may be the issue. Uh, we are recording. It will be online. If it's completely unviable, then drop out and pick it up tomorrow would be my suggestion. I'm using a weekly chart on just one lap. I'm trading the... Indy 25, Resi 10, Fini 15, and mid-cap indices. So I'm not trading top 40. I'm trading the sub-indices in a sense. The three majors, uh, Indy, Resi, Fini, and then the mid-cap, which is sort of the, your, your, your second tier down. And I trade the ETFs. So importantly, we trade ETF. Satrix, Indy, Satrix, Resi, Satrix, Fini, and the Ashburton mid-cap. Used to be the RMB, now the Ashburton mid-cap. So what we're, what we're seeing here is... Very, very lazy. We just trade in the index. Absolutely just trade in the index. Um, important point, my entries are now moving to Monday, 9.30. Uh, let me come back to that in a second. So we trade in the index. We trade the exchange traded fund. Nice, simple, clean, low cost. We'll touch on costs in a second. I enter and exit trades at 9.30 on a Monday morning. This is the change. I used to enter and exit trades at 4.30 on a Friday afternoon. A uh, couple of challenges for that. One, I don't work Friday afternoons. I record a TV show at lunchtime, um, and then my weekend starts. So it was getting in the way of that. Uh, but a number of folks were also saying, you oh, know, Friday afternoon, 4.30, not a great time. You know, not in terms of what the market's doing, just in terms of personal, you know, getting in or out. So I looked at switching to Monday, and short answer, it works. So sometimes you're going to get a better price on a Monday. Sometimes you're going to get a worse price on a Monday. But uh, three years back testing said to me, swings and roundabouts doesn't matter. So I get my single, single signal, and then I can go and enter the trade on the Monday morning. There's also some admin back office that makes us a whole lot simpler, and I'll touch on that in a bit when we get to the point. But that's the big change that we're going to be entering and exiting on a Monday. Why 9.30? Uh, because market makers only come in at about 10, quarter past nine. Pretty much as soon as they're in the market, I will enter or exit that particular trade. So that's just a, 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 the, one the one change. As I said, about the first change in about three years I've been doing that. No gearing, no short trades. So we trade the ETF. We do not gear it. We do not put a CFD on it at all. So could we do an ETF? Could we gear this? Absolutely. That's one of the adaptions you can do. If you're going to gear it, I would not go on a weekly chart. Because remember the cost of that gearing. Now, so I'm going to trade for, I don't know, five, six, seven, eight weeks. I lose, I don't know, two or three percent. Um, that's fine. If you gear that, it's not that you've now lost uh, a, a larger percentage, that you've also had to fund the position for a heck lot longer. I also don't do short trades on this. Why don't I do them? Practically, I can't short these, these ETFs unless I do gearing. Now, I, I, could, I could hack that. There's certainly ways I could do it. The point with shorting is that shorting is violent, it's fast, it's volatile. Uh, you get it right, it collapses, you're looking good. Next thing, it rallies through the sky, you get stopped out. Short answer is I do very little short trades. They're just a higher risk. And I've come to the conclusion that, yeah, sure, uh, you know, we can do a right with them, but I'm just, I'm not a massive, you know, 
when you get them right, you make vast amount of money, but you so seldom get them right. The one exception, Aussie futures, obviously I go short. Carl is saying, is it vital to trade at the same time every week? Carl, no. I mean, basically, I'm going to entry exit Monday morning. Now, if you can't do 9.30, but you can do 10 o'clock, that's fine. If you can do quarter past nine, that's perfect. If you want to do the five, the, the half past five, quarter to half past four, quarter to five on a Friday, that's perfect too. Absolutely. So, you know, the 9.30 is just, I've put a note to my calendar every Monday from this Monday coming up until my calendar runs out of days, I will get an alert and say, you know, are you entering or exiting? What we are going to be doing is adding a, uh, a section to the Just One Lab website, which one can subscribe to. At the moment, the way we, we, we notify this, the way we do the process is we drop it in our newsletter, which goes out every Monday morning at about 7 o'clock. And I tweet on my Twitter account, Simon PB, 9 o'clock every Monday morning as to what the status of the, of, of the system is. We're going to be making a more formal section within the Just One Lab website where you sign up. It will automatically generate emails, uh, give you post, you know, trades, etc., all of that sort of thing. That will be coming in the next couple of weeks. Um, and, and here's the caveat. And, and, and give me a second. Hear me out. Uh, the caveat is that it's going to be free initially. At some point, we will charge for the process. When we'll start charging, I'm not sure. How much, I'm not sure. The point being is this video will always be available for free. What you're paying for is not the system. What you'll be paying for is the process, the, the emails coming through, the reminders, the, e the, the alerts, et cetera, et cetera. So that'll be coming soon. As soon as it's up, we'll drop everyone an email. As I said, at least for the first, I don't know, three months, six months or something, it will be free why we just make sure it works. Um, and we might grandfather people in. And we're looking at ideas there. We haven't decided exactly what. We're busy getting our HTTPS up on the website. When that happens, we've got the back end. We'll launch it. And then at some point, Lazy has traded on just one lap. ETFs are cheap to trade. So go and find your cheapest ETF broker. So the answer is quite simple. Uh, I have in this last week opened an account with uh, ABSA stockbrokers. I'm in that process. Um, it's I haven't opened. Actually, I did open an account just a few months ago with someone else and it was easy. There's a process you follow. But why am I going to ABSA stockbrokers? I'm opening an ETF only account. In other words, I'm not trading my normal equities. They're only ETFs. They have zero admin fee and they charge me 0.2% per transaction minimum. 20 rand. It's the cheapest place to trade an ETF. So that's why I'm, I'm going there. And I don't pay STT, no security transfer tax in an ETF. So you don't pay that 0.25%. So my trades are going to be costing me all in, including VAT and, and straight and everything else. They're going to be costing me about 0.27% or something. In other words, nice and small. At the moment, they're costing me about 0.57. So I'm, I'm saving 0.6% per trade, in and out. Is that massive? No. But you know what? It's 0.6% that comes to my pocket rather than a broker, and I can go and buy wine, or if I want, I can take the broker to lunch, whatever the case may be. Also important, as I said, make sure the market maker is in the market when you transact. If you're not sure about market makers, hit just one lap, do a search. We've got a lot of information there around those, those market makers. So quick recap here. On just one lap, we trade a weekly chart. We trade Indy Resi Finney Midcap, the ETS. Entries moving to Monday, 9.30. No gearing, no short trades. Uh, find your cheapest. If your broker's cheap, that's fine. As I said, I'm opening an Absolute Stock Broking account. I don't get paid to say that. Yes, they are a sponsor of a part of my website. But the truth of the matter is 0.2%, zero admin fee in an ETF-only account. Eh? Don't go and open an equity account. In an ETF-only account, they are the cheapest in the market. Hence, I trade them. So let's look at the system. How does it work? What is the system? So first step of the lazy system is to determine the primary trend. Is the market going up or is the market going down? Now, Clive, to your question, you know, what about if I could go and decide if that primary trend is sideways? I haven't been able to work that out. But So I'm doing a primary trend which is either up or down. How do I determine primary trend? So the first thing I do is I load two exponential moving averages, EMAs onto my chart, a 30 and a 60. Because I'm trading it in a weekly chart, that's a 30-week exponential moving average and a 60-week exponential moving average. If the 30 is above the 60, trend is up. 
If the 30 is below the 60, trend is down. I only take trades in the direction of the trend. So if the 30 is above the 60 and I get a sell signal, I ignore it. If the 30 is above the 60 and I get a buy signal, then I'm in business. Uh, as I said, only take trends in their primary direction. So if trend is up, I ignore short trades. And if trend is down, I ignore long trades. And remember, I'm not in the lazy on the just one lap. I'm not trading short anyway. So I'm only taking long trades when the primary trend is up. So the first part of the process is lay your 30 and 60 EMA on the chart and say, what's my trend? Now, that is the direction you will trade in. Nice and simple. Second step is wait for the price to revert to the primary trend. In other words, the primary trend is up. Price is trend is down. When it goes back up, we're in business. How do we do that? So that tells me my trend, 30 and 60 trend is up. Price cuts up through 15 exponential moving average is my trigger. So 30 and 60 gives me direction. And then the price goes from below the 15 EMA to above the 15 EMA. Boom. Now the price is realigning with the primary trend. You see what I'm trying to do? I'm trying to catch that turn. Now, because I'm in a weekly chart and because it's a 15 week EMA, you know, I'm not catching it to the second. I'm trying to catch it uh, within a couple of weeks, maybe a month or so, trying to catch it. I don't enter the moment price cuts up. I enter on the next candle if it confirms. In other words, I have a two step entry process. I get the trigger. So let's say this Friday, price goes up through the EMA. That's my trigger. When do I buy? about the following week if we close green. And I'm going to show you some examples of this. So this means I get a lot of triggers, but if the market is choppy and not convinced, I don't enter the trade. This reduces the number of trades I do by about half, and, what it, and, and those half that I don't do, what that essentially means, those half I don't do are nearly, you know, 99.9% .9 of them are losing trades. So it reduces the number of losing trades. And this is something which is worth looking at just generally in trading is a two-step entry process because it reduces the number of trades. Dani, the following week, is that a week later then to enter? Yes. So let's take, let's go back in time. And let's say last Friday, uh, I got a buy signal on the Indy. This Friday, if the Indy is green, that confirms the buy signal. And I would then enter first thing Monday morning. Remember, I've moved my buys and sells to the Monday morning. So it's a very slow process. But what it means is that if I got a buy signal last Friday and we've seen the market go all crazy and it actually closes down for the week, I step back and I say, thanks, but not getting into this trade. Now, a trigger can remain active. And I'll show you examples of how a trigger remains active for a longer period of time. So that two-step entry process is critically important. It saves me a bundle in terms of transaction fees. I got to cross the spread. So it saves me on those as well. And it saves me a bundle on losing trades. Uh, Johan, does cut through 15 mean close or only touch? Uh, it must close through it. Must close through it. I've never had a situation where it closed exactly on it. If it did, I would probably, cons I don't know, I would, I, would, I, would, I would go to the 100th decimal point, and if it was still sp spot on, I would consider it probably a buy anyway. So that two-step entry process, very important. So he has it visually, and then I'm going to go to some charts. So what do I do? So I lay my 30 and 60 EMA. I'm in a weekly chart, but whatever. If you're in an hourly chart, it's a 30-hour EMA. If you're in a daily, it's a 30-day EMA. I lay my 30 and 60. They always blue and red. 30 is above 60, which means I'm looking for long trades. There's my 15 EMA, which is my uh, price trigger trade. And there's the price going through. So the step is we start there, 30 and 60. Cool. Trend is up. Well, the price is going at this point here. I'm doing nothing. But when the price finally actually goes up, when we see the price going up at this point here, boom in business. But remember, if it closes there at the end of the first period, nothing. Second candle, still green, boom, business. Now I enter the trade. 
Uh, Clive, green confirmation, but still lower than the previous week. Do you enter or wait for a higher? No, uh, okay, great point there, Clive. No, it needs to be, when I say green, it actually needs to be higher than the previous week. So if it closed at 500 last week, I need it above 500. Folks, keep the questions going because they, they yeah, the problem with this system is I've been trading it for so long that there's stuff that I just assume and like the question from Clive there, it's like, haha, hang on, Simon, you haven't quite clarified it. We've got the time this evening. I'm only on TV tomorrow at lunchtime, so we could go to lunchtime, but that would really mess my dinner plans. Um, let's make sure that when we finish this presentation this evening, everyone is 100% up to speed because there's gonna be people watching the video and they're not gonna have the luxury of the questions. So let's get those questions done. So here are some examples. What these charts are, are not important. Um, in some cases, I know what they are, but really not important. So here's a practical example. There is, let me get my highlighter back. Uh, there is my 30, sorry, 60. There is my 30, trend is up. There is my 15. So there was the one candle, it closed below. Next candle closed above. I did nothing, this candle I entered. So I would have entered at the the, 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 that point there. And then we're in business. Trade goes off, happy, everything looking lovely. I'm gonna show you a bunch of charts. Uh, Johan, you're asking what software I'm using. So I'm using Ami Broker. Any semi-decent software should be able to do this for you. Some of the free software that comes with uh, the, the brokers only lets you do two moving averages, no sweat, drop your 30 and 60, get the trend, take them off, drop your 15 on. Uh, Pule stop losses and the like, I'll come to in a second. Um, Doug, will a hell MA work as well? I don't know what a hell MA, H-U-L-L. I don't know what that is, to be honest. So yes, so I've done it with simple. I've done it with weighted. I've done it with exponential. I always use exponential moving averages with one exception. Uh, and that was a 7 and 21 moving average system I used to trade. Um, but the different moving averages make very, very uh, small differences. Johan, close above previous close or above previous candle high. <clears throat> so just close. Good question. Uh, let's go back as, uh, let's go to that slide. We got the trigger, we got the second point. It didn't close above the high, it just closed above the close. And I'm quite happy with that. I'm not, it doesn't have to close above the high. In truth, I don't need to use candles. I could use end of day line chart for this, or end of week, I could use line chart. I just always use candles, I like to look at candles. Uh, yep, and these are these happen to be weekly candles because I'm looking at it. Uh, does MetaTrader software wear corner? Absolutely, MetaTrader would work as well. So there's another example. Here what we've got is an interesting one, right? So we've got our 30 above our 60. Nice. We went up through the 15. Nice. And then the candle was down for the week. So we did not enter the trade on this week here. But the candle did not close below the 15. My trigger is still active. And then on this candle, we did close. So then I can enter. So you see what happens there. Let me take these lines off. We get the buy in that candle. We get the trigger. It does not confirm for that candle because it was down for the week. So it does not confirm. But because it didn't close below the 15, the trigger is still active. And the following week, it confirmed. The reason I do that is because if I say it cancels at that point, the candle where we entered, that candle number three, I would have missed the entry because I wouldn't have had the trigger. So although it did go down, because it was above, it's still active. I then enter in that week, this candle here. Some more examples. I've got loads of examples, folks. Um, <clears throat> here's an example where it failed. So there's my trigger. But boom, down, fail. There's a new trigger. There's my confirmation candle here. So that one did fail. Immediately later, went again. So in this case, if you know the two-step didn't really save me much here. In fact, I would have perhaps been better off without it. But in this case, the fail, then the new trigger, and then the entry in. Here's one that ran forever in 17 years. So this is the indie one I was talking about. Here was my initial buy all the way down here. There was an initial buy. You can see my 30 and 60. You can see my 15. We cut through. 
we get the confirmation, we buy in that candle. And I, folks, I haven't told you about exiting. I'm going to get there in a moment. What we then got was another entry. What we then got was another entry. And in fact, this trade continued on into, into somewhere into 2014. It ran for about three years and some change. Um, a couple of different entries, but you can see from that entry there to that entry there was November through to, was November 2011 through to April of 2013. This trade was was one of the best ever. I mean, I got in at around my first entry. We can check it here. First entry was around twenty eight thousand, and we exited at around seventy odd thousand. Um, no, did we enter that? Uh, maybe it was. Uh, this trade just went and went and went. And the beauty is, you're in an ETF, so you're getting absolutely. You've got no issues in terms of of cost of 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 carry. Uh, sure, you got the total expense ratio of the ETF. You're actually getting dividends. You start actually getting dividends. Um, uh, Hupotso, could you use dojos as confirmations? You absolutely could. Uh, I, I, I am not a, a Japanese candle expert by any stretch. I'm not even sure what a doji looks like. If you showed me one, I'd like, oh, yeah. Um, but you, you absolutely can. <coughs> Excuse me. That's a big point around trading systems is I'm going to show this to you. And you're going to have, you, you're a dojo fan, and you're going to say, hey, man, if I bring my dojos in here, don't be afraid to tweak. I mean, make sure your tweaks are valuable. But you know what tweaking does is it makes it more yours. It makes you more comfortable with it. It makes you more practically like, like you know, it, it just it works better for you from a pure psychological point. Folks, a lot of questions are coming in that I'm ignoring. If I'm ignoring your question, I'm not. I'm just holding it for the end. Uh, so here's some other stories here. So here's one. Uh, let's get my, my my highlighter back. So here's one. Boom. Big story goes up. Second week, trigger doesn't confirm, but it hasn't yet failed. Okay. Uh, next week, boom, down below the 15, so it failed. Off it goes again. Here we get a, 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 a trigger. Uh, it doesn't confirm, but doesn't fail. Boom. There it finally fails on me again. Uh, here again, we get a trigger. Uh, again, it doesn't confirm. This was the indie, uh, and I can't remember when it was from, but I do remember. So we're looking here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and I can tell you the next candle failed, 13 weeks. This is three months where, in a sense, I'm not entering the trade. So maybe it does kind of work for the sideways market because of that, 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 that entry process. So for, for, for three months, the system boogied along and said, you know what, stuff's happening, but we're not doing anything. And it's perfect because, you know, where were we over that, that, that three-month period? So in the three months, the market went sideways. We were sitting in cash. So what happened for those three months we were sitting in cash? Well, we earned some interest. Now, next could not get excited. We didn't earn a lot of interest, but we made some. Uh, Rogan, if, I get, if I'm already in a trade with an ETF and you get another entry in the same ETF, do I take it? Yes. And I'm going to come to that in more detail in a moment. Short answer, capital ally, I will take it. Uh, Clive, EMA going down would surely indicate a sideways market. Uh, fair point. So in this case, EMA is, 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 is weak. At that point here, although the EMA is then turned up. And again, at this point here, the EMA is turned up. And I bet you if I took that arrow off. So that 15 is fairly sensitive. So it seemed on the buy triggers when the market went through it, the EMA had turned, and then down, and then up, and then down. Uh, Rhino, nope, I have not got to exits. I'm coming to exits in a second. Here we go, exits. So how do you get out of this? You're in a trade. When do you exit it? So in my weekly time frame, remember I'm trading this ETFs weekly, no gearing. I only exit on stop loss. I only exit on stop loss. That's it, stop loss only. On daily or shorter time frame, I will scale out as we go into profit and leaving, leave some for stop loss. So what I mean by scale out, for example, when I trade this on Aussie, I trade lots of three contracts. So I'll trade three, six, nine, 12, 15, 18 contracts. And what I do is I sell a third at 1,500 points profit. I sell a second third at 3,000 points profit. And the last third, I let it stop me out. I... In strong trends, I will often get to the 15, I will sometimes get to the 3,000, and I will occasionally 
you know, get my third lot also out at even more than 3,000. But on my weekly time frame, on my very lazy, and you know why? I'm only taking out on stop because let's go back to this trade here. So you entered the Indy in October of 2011 at around 28, 29, let's call it, let's call it 28,000 points. Where did you take your profit? I mean, surely somewhere around here, you start to take profit. Certainly, maybe here at around 42,000, you start to take profit. This thing went to 70. It just went and went and went. So, you know, and, and, and the trick is, and I talk about this a lot, we lack ambition. We all do. You know, you get into a lazy trade on an index on the Indy, and you're, you're, up, you're up 50%, and you're like, man, it can't go more, surely. You know, 50%. How much higher can this thing go? Well, the Indy went to 70-odd thousand. I think it hit 76,000. Um, this was an insane rally. But we saw the same thing in the resi up to the 2007-8 crisis. Um, we saw a, 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 the financials in the late, uh, late 90s. We've, you know, insane rallies are, are absolutely um, uh, the, 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 the common occurrence. Uh, Johan, do I drop time frame when exiting? No, I don't. So I keep my time frame. I stay in my time frame for my exit. On the weekly, only on stop. On the shorter time frame, I do find that I'm typically taking some profits. Otherwise, not. Uh, on the Aussie daily, what's the success rate of the system? So long-term success rate is about 48%. We call it 50-50. Um, what you need, so you get a lot of small losing trades, and then you get the giant kicker, and it pays you all the money. It has been a tough year and a half for this system on the Aussie. So last year, that run up to the all-time high in May of last year, we had a nice trade uh, back again in the run up in 2014 from around March through to June. We had a nice trade. And I was in that Aussie trade for about three and a half months. Um, so it worked quite nicely there as well. But you take a lot of drawdown. Uh, Jordan, you say no stocks because of volatility. You trade the Aussie. So yeah. Because the Aussie is not as volatile. So for the Aussie to move 2% in a day is a big deal. For a top 40 stock, 2% a day happening all the time. All the time. So stocks, stocks are one of the riskiest things that we can trade in terms of pure volatility. They are massively volatile. On Monday, we had Anglo and Anglo Gold Ashanti both down 10%. You know, we, we get these massive moves all the time. Um, your least volatile is FX. Trading majors, hey, not the rand. If you're trading dollar euro, dollar st uh, uh, sterling, dollar yen, you know, for them to do a two percent move in a day, I don't know if the euro's ever done that against the dollar. So my profit exit weekly time frame only exit and stop. I'll come to a second what the stop is. Daily or shorter time frames, I'm scaling up. Excuse me, and then of course I'm still having a stop loss in, in place. Uh, Chris, how do I set my stop loss? Perfectly timed question. Stop loss. So what is my stop loss? Exponential moving average. So if I'm long and it goes below the 15 or 30 EMA, I exit. Couple of critically important points. When I'm in the weekly chart, uh, I'm exiting on the 30. So the weekly chart is my 30 EMA. So let's go back to, so you can see down here, let me pull my highlighter up. We went below the 15, but I didn't exit. Here, below the 15, I'm still not exiting. I'm exiting on the 30. So here was an exit. Let's go way back. Let's go back to this part of the world over here. Here, and let me pull up a pen rather because it's less crazy. So there I got a buy and it confirmed. And then I got exited at that point there. Then I got a buy and it confirmed. And then I got exited at that point there. And then I got a buy and then it confirmed. And then I got exited there. So, I mean, you can, and the problem with this system is after all of this, man, you've given up. You've had one, two, three trades, four trades, three trades. They've all lost you money. It hasn't been fun. You're absolutely hating it. Uh, so you throw the system away and then boom this. Trading is about perseverance. Trading is about drawdowns. If they're going to happen, don't be scared of drawdowns, folks.
A uh, couple more questions. Will the system also work on small cap and venture capital ETFs? Uh, so the mid cap, it does work. Uh, small and venture, I'm not sure. Haven't tried. We haven't got local, and I haven't yet taken it offshore. Uh, Pule, you don't do short trades on Aussie daily? Yes, I do. So I will take shorts on the Aussie. Absolutely, I will. Importantly, I chart the top 40, and then I trade the Aussie. So I'm using 30 in my weekly. I'm using a 15 on the shorter time frames. I exit on close of candle, which does add me some risk there. And as I said, 15 EMA I use for those shorter time frames. And that is my stop loss. I used uh, uh, a close of candle. Uh, Rhino, why would this strat not work on top 40? No, it works. In, so, so it does work on top 40. So, I, so it's a good point, Rhino. So what I've done is... I used to trade it on top 40. And in fact, back in the day, I used uh, uh, Aussie and then I used some warrants as well. I don't trade it on top 40 and use the top 40 ETF. And you absolutely could go trade top 40 ETF only. What I've done is the four sub indices, Indy, Resi, Finney, and Midcap. And then I boogie off and I then go and do the, the uh, Aussie futures where I'm basically trading my top 40 and then with gearing. Uh, Donny is uh, also a week later. No. So good point. So if we close below the 30 EMA on Friday, I will exit 9.30 Monday morning. So the exit's immediate. I, I, I'm not interested in that pain. I, I've looked at it, but um, how much of Capital King? I'll come to your question in a second. Rhino, pleasure. So risk management. That stop loss is part of it, the second part of which risk management. In this case, I'm trading four indices within a portfolio. So that I'm opening up the ABSA account. Uh, as soon as it's open and I've done the FICA, I'll put 200,000 Rand into the account and I'll trade the lazy system within just one lap. So each index can be 25% of the portfolio. So Indy can be 25, Resi, Finney, and Midcap. So when we are in a stonking bull market, I will be 100% invested in it across all four indices. But when certain spaces are, I mean, I haven't done a resi trade in, I don't know when last I did a resi trade. I probably did one 09, 2010, perhaps. And certainly I had some in, in, in the lead up to the, to the, 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 the crisis. But, uh, you know, it's been years and years since I've done a, 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 a resi trade. Um, my initial entry is 12.5%. In other words, so let's, for simplicity, I got 100,000 Rand portfolio. I want to put 25,000 into the indie. I actually only put 12,500 into the Indy on the first trade. When I get the second entry, then I put the other 12,500. So again, that reduces, uh, I want to go to that chart there. That, so in this case, I would have got my first 12,500 in here, my second 12,500 there. At this point up here, when I get another buy signal, all things equal, my portfolio has got bigger. I've got some cash into the portfolio, right? I've maybe made some profit on other trades. So let's say I put 12,500 in at the first trade. I put 12,500 in the second trade. 25% of my portfolio is now in the indie, no more. But when I get to this entry here, let's say my portfolio has grown to, let's say, 120,000. I don't know where that other 20 came from. Maybe it's money I deposited. Maybe it's profit from trades and, and, and dividends and the like. But now I can actually add a fairly small position there, but a quarter of 120 is 30,000, so I can add another five in. So stop loss again on the close, but I exit immediately. I don't give it a week. If you close below my stop loss on Friday, I'm exiting the position. Folks, I'm going to, uh, and then the four indices. So each index is quarter of the portfolio. Initial entry is half size. Second trade puts me in. The operative word here is lazy, hey folks, lazy, totally lazy. So I'm going to go through some adaptions and we look at costs and taxes and then we can go back to the system and make sure everyone's happy. I know that we are already running. My time check is 20 to 9. Uh, folks, we are recording. If you've got time pressures, no worries. Video will be up sometime tomorrow and there will be an email sent to you as well. So your adaptions are you can trade FX. It works fairly well in the FX environment. So FX, I've tested it on four-hour and daily charts, um, even weekly charts. Below that, it just gets far too noisy. To my mind, most things, you know, I never trade below an hourly chart. And in fact, I haven't even, you know, since I quit day trading, 
I did a bit of 15 minute trading sort of when I left Standard Bank, sort of 2011, 2012. But these days, when I'm when I'm if I'm trading shorter time frames, I'm not going below an hour. An hour, but less than an hour. You know, there's no time to make coffee or, or, or go to the toilet or anything like that. I trade hourly charts. 30, 15 minute, one minute, five minute. Can you make money? Sure. For me, for the birds. And maybe I'm just getting old. I'm happy with that too. We can take it offshore. Uh, Clive, you've got a question here. Uh, how about DBX and the uh, interest-free accounts? Uh -huh. So the tax free I'm going to come to in a second. So you could do it offshore with the DBX trackers. Remember that they don't, for example, the DBX US. It's not tracking the S&P 500. It's tracking the MSCI 600. So just make sure that you're, that you're, that you're doing the, the, the right underlying chart. And maybe the S&P 500 and MSI 600 are very, very similar in terms of moves. I'm not sure. But so you could do it via the X trackers. You could also just go offshore. You could open an offshore account. Um, and I'm going to be doing that. And I need to look at the list on my wall. So the indices I'm looking at trading is S&P 500, uh, Nikkei 225, uh, Eurostox 50, and uh, FTSE 100. Um, so, and just to run that list again, S&P 500, Nikkei 225, which is Japan, Euro 50, which is Europe, but excludes UK. Uh, so predominantly France and Germany, excuse me, France and Germany. Uh, and then FTSE 100 would be the four that I'm trading there. Uh, Pula, any particular favorite FX pairs? Yeah, so look, FX pairs, there are only, they're, 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 they're only three that one should trade. Forget the rest. I mean, folks like Warren Peacock and, and, and you know, others trade others. To me, I trade dollar euro. I trade dollar cable, uh, dollar yen. And when I say I trade them, those are the ones I've tested it on. Those are the ones I will trade it on. Uh, do not trade a miner. Do not trade the RAND. And even like the, the 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 Canadian dollar, the Aussie dollar, New Zealand dollar, Swiss franc, stick to the three majors. And then I always trade a, a US something to the major. Uh, Johan, with FX trades close on Fridays, not Mondays. Yep, probably so. So the trick with FX is, you know, it's the hours that they're running. And so what are they typically? So we close 5 p.m. in New York on a Friday which is 10 or 6 o'clock uh, Friday evening. Uh, I hope you didn't have dinner plans for it. But yeah, I mean, otherwise you could, as I said, you could drop it to a four hourly or daily. But if you're looking at a weekly Friday. Uh, Pula, question there is Global Trader. Are these available there? Sorry, I missed that question. Yep. So the ETFs should absolutely be on Global Trader. So you can look at offshore. Um, and we can take it offshore and, and trade FX. We can trade the indices there. I'm physically opening an offshore account, or I have an offshore account. I have cash in it, and I'm going to start trading offshore as well with those four indices I mentioned. You can adjust your time frames. Um, could you go longer than weekly? Yeah, you could go to monthly charts, but yeah, I mean, I'm patient, but I don't even think I'm that patient. Um, you can drop to daily. You can drop to four hourly on FX. You can drop to hourly. You know, I, I know a chap in, in, in KZN who trades this on a 15-minute chart, and he says it works beautifully. Um, it's, a, it's a lifestyle choice. You know, I don't want to trade a 15-minute chart because I don't want to be sitting in front of my computer all day, every day. You know, 15 minutes is barely enough time to make a good uh, a cappuccino. Um, yeah. Etienne, if you're short the Aussie, do you use CFDs or options? Uh, I use neither. I'm using Aussie futures. So I'm trading the, the Aussie future. You could use a CFD. You could use an option. An option, watch out for time decay and expiry. They're a little more tricky in that space. But you certainly could use a CFD as well from like IG and other such folks. Um, and the other point is you can bring gearing in. I'm not trading this gearing geared because... You know, I, I so I, I trade Aussie futures, and in a sense, people are like, you know, oh, that's dangerous and risky and everything. And 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 yes, but you know, what if you got risk management in place? And you know, even even back in two thousand and eight, nine, the crisis, even our massive overnight moves, yeah, they were big. You know, those overnight moves were sometimes three, four, five percent. But if you're going to get wiped out by that, you're trading too big. You need to reduce your trade size down. You need to get to the point where you can sleep at night. And no matter what happens the next morning, you're fine. But I just, you know, I'm looking for lazy trading. I do very little geared trading at all. But if you want to gear it, that's fine. A, a couple of points. And go to Just One Lap and find the IG Bootcamp video. Go to justonelap.com slash bootcamp and find the one on margin, leverage, and exposure. 
be careful of overgearing your entire portfolio. You know, if I ran this on CFDs, and I could trade these ETFs with CFDs, average gearing on the CFD about seven. Suddenly, my 200,000 portfolio, when I'm fully invested, is a 1.4 million portfolio. Um, I'm paying interest on 1.4 million. The interest is killing me for a start. A, a, a bad move against me is going to massively hurt that. You know, a, let's go back to last year, three finance ministers in four days. That Thursday, Friday, what were we down? Seven, eight percent in two days. Gear that, you're down 60%. Your 200K is now 60 or 70K. Um, man, you've been, you've been really, really hurt. So if you're going gearing, go careful with that gearing. Uh, Peter, do I take capital and do this for other people? Short answer, no. Long answer, we are, and I know I've been saying this about my momentum portfolio for a long time, we are talking to, to providers who will facilitate such, uh, whether it's via a a follow me type portfolio, whether it's via a, a product of a sort, such as a, an ETF or a collective investment scheme. We, we, are, we are finally actually making progress. I've been trying to do this for years and years, and we're finally making some progress there. Um, tax. Yeah, here comes the bad news. So this is a trading system. So it's taxed as income. So you pay tax at your marginal rate after all deductions. What are your deductions? So your brokerage costs are deductions. Your losing trades are, de are deductions. Um, your, your, you subscribe to Finweek, that's a deduction. You, you, uh, you, know, you, you, you buy a trading book, that's a deduction. Part of your internet and computer usage, those are all deductions. I'm not a tax expert, get advice, but this is certainly a trading system. Here's the thing. What about sticking it in a tax-free savings account? Yeah, so that's what I'm doing. I mean, short answer. So March of next year, um, and why am I waiting for March? For two reasons. One, because by March of next year, I would have been able to put, that would be the third year of TFSAs. I would have been able to put 90,000 into my TFSA. Hopefully, with some growth, I'm sitting at now about 100,000 with it. Now I can boogie off and trade this in a tax-free savings account. And I am absolutely 100% going to be doing that. Without a shadow of a doubt, I'm going to do that in a tax-free savings account. The other issue is I'm going to need to, in fact, you know, my tax-free savings account is so cheap with my current provider. So I will be trading it in a TFSA from March 2017. Uh, Philip, do I short FX? Sure, no problem with that. Because remember, you're shorting FX. You're Essentially, you short one. You always short one currency and long the other because they're a pair. Rhino, golden rule, cost can be deducted for tax as long as it was incurred in the production of income. 100%. So what SARS says, so if you hold something for longer than three years, it's capital gains, which is what, a third of your marginal tax rate, or is it now 40%, but your first 40,000 is, 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 is fine, you can take that. But what SARS says with this is they say, hang on, your income. So what does it mean if it's income? It means it's business. So as a business, you have costs. If you're selling hot dogs at the beach, um, SARS says that income you made from selling hot dogs is income and taxed as income. But you're going to say to SARS, yeah, but I have costs. I have costs of sausages, of, of rolls, of serviettes, of tomato sauce, of mustard, et cetera, et cetera. So you take your income, you subtract your costs, you pay tax on what's left. Critically important. No difference with trading. Absolutely no difference with trading. So your costs are losing trades. A losing trade is a cost. Your brokerage fees, your admin fees, your subscription services, anything that was in the pursuit of that income is deductible before you pay tax. If you're going to tweak it, if you're going to adapt it, and you're more than welcome, and I'm perfectly comfortable. In fact, I mean, so what I usually recommend with folks is, is, is take what I've given you, pull it apart, put it back together again, have a look at it. In that process, you're going to want to maybe do some tweaks. Well, tweak it. See how that seems to make it feel. You're welcome to drop me an email. Uh, contact details coming up in a slide. Um, you're absolutely welcome to, 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 to engage me on the process. What I said earlier is completely true. What you need to do, if you, you know, how do we learn? We learn by presentations like this. We learn by doing most. But we really, really learn by taking apart. You know, how does a car work? Well, we watch someone drive. We learn. We drive a bit. We learn. Man, you take that engine apart and put it back together. You really learn. I mean, what I learned every time I took an engine apart, what, there was always more nuts and bolts than were needed, apparently, because um, they never all fitted again. But you get the point. Um, inversely, if you're sitting there and saying, no, man, I want to do this as is, 100%. 
you know, I, I'm not prescribing anyway. Sideways markets will hurt absolutely. Subscription service coming soon. The point with subscription service, and I'll say it again, it's the convenience part of it. Um, you know, if you want to be lazy, lazy. So, you know, you want to do that five minutes on the Sunday. I'll do it. I'll bang you the mail. We, we will have a fairly modest fee for it at some point, but the video will always be available. So you can always go and do it yourself. Uh, there are contact details. My email is simon at justonelap.com. Uh, I'm on the Twitters. I'm on the Facebooks. I'm on everything. I'm even on Elo. No one else seems to be on Elo, but you're welcome to come chat to us on Elo. And of course, there is a legal disclaimer as always. Uh, ladies and gents, we've really hit time, but I'm going to take questions until they disappeared. Are the industries, Satrix, equal weighted, Jacques? No, they're not. They are market cap weighted. For an investment perspective, I prefer equal weighted. For the trading perspective, I just trade what is there. Uh, Chris, absolute pleasure. Video up tomorrow. You can go and review. Uh, Johan, what is average win-loss ratio using lazy system? 44% uh, win, 56% lose. Average return is doing 1.6 times what top 40 does. It's a difficult one because of adaptions. So that's only about a five and a half year average, which is relatively short. But it, So I'm aiming to do 1.6 times. The one key benefit is like in 2008, the system went into cash. The whole crisis happened. The system sits in cash. The crisis ends. I come out. In truth, I went into cash. I re-entered only about 5 or 10% lower, but I earned interest. And remember, when markets, when, when, when markets are crashing, I earned 15% interest. So I did a 25% outperform. Market was down 10. I got 15% interest. I did a 25% outperform. Uh, Abs ETF account is this for tax-free investing? So you, they've got an ETF only, and they've got a tax-free account. So they're separate. Both charge 0.2 percent. Both have zero admin fee. My pleasure, uh, King. How do you trade the system offshore ETFs or geared? So I'm going to be trading at ETFs ungeared. I'm basically taking this system. I've got dollars offshore. Uh, I've got uh, twenty thousand dollars sitting in an account, and I'm going to be trading that. Uh, Etienne, uh, who can you recommend as a broker to trade Aussie futures? Pure Aussie futures, dwt.coza. dwt.coza. I'll type that in for you. That's if you just want pure, good old, nice, simple, no bowls, no whistles, Aussie futures. Jacko, my pleasure. Uh, Rhino, can I actually trade within a TFA with profits being tax free? Yeah. So the thing with a TFSA, and it's practicality, you can do 700 trades in a day. They're not going to do a thing. Their logic is that if they start restricting and saying you can only do extra, it, it just becomes a nightmare. So you can trade. You, look, you can only trade ETFs, but you can trade within a TFSA. My favorite red wine, Rodney, red. <laughs> Actually, Warwick Trilogy is my favorite red, red wine. And there's a long story behind it. Um, but Warwick Trilogy is my favorite. I, I, you know, I'm a snob on chocolate. I'm a snob on coffee. On wine, I like it red. I'm a simple oak in that sense. Uh, Willem, great idea for avoiding busyness. Absolutely. You know, let's spend our time doing something we love. Uh, Corpus, I'm all for wine as soon as I can get through all of this. Yes. So that's what we'll be doing. Corner will be providing an entry signal service. So what it'll do, it'll 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 bang you. And we'll maybe tie SMS in with and everything. So you don't have to do anything. An email will come and say, today we do nothing. Next week an email comes and says, today we buy this or we sell that. So it'll be even lazier for you folks. That's the plan. A tool. Favorite tool for backtesting? Aish. Uh, Jacques, you're going to hate this. Um, piece of paper in my eyes. Yeah. And and it's a laborious, horrible, horrible process. Um, I've outsourced some of it to India before. They were fairly efficient with it, but really a piece of paper in my eyes. You know why? Because if I code it, I'm going to make a mistake in the coding. I'm just going to make a mistake in the coding. Um, or, or I'm not, but I'm not going to be sure. So I just, I go to the chart, I'll go back 10 or 15. It, it's killer. It is killer. It hurts the back. It hurts the eyes. It hurts everything. But it's good old-fashioned. And it. Ladies and gents, we out of questions. I'm going to leave it right there. Uh, if you're on the video or you got questions later, grab hold of me at justonelap.com. You'll find my contact details. You can tweet me. Uh, Ask the questions, tweet, email, Facebook, whatever your preferred method is. I'm more than happy with that. Send the questions. Uh, I suppose the point is, let's be lazy. You know, lazy is definitely what we want to be. Um, 
Hard work, lovely, but Lex will be lazy. Ladies and gents, I appreciate your time this evening. I know I've gone on for an hour, which is a massive long time. Uh, you all have a great evening further. Video will be up later this evening. Uh, no, I lie. Video will be up tomorrow, uh, hopefully late morning. Everyone, cheers. Thanks for your time. Thanks for the questions. This is always better for questions. Cheers all.